So we are, we are reading the fifth agreement. We are on page 63 of the PDF. The dream of your life is made by thousands of little dreams that are dynamic. Dreams are born, they grow and they die, which means they're always transforming. So again, so how do we create a reality with our thoughts, right? So when we are thinking, right, I am fat, I am thin, I am short, I am this and that. These are all dreams actually, right? They are small intents that we are making and throwing out into the universe. So the point here becomes that our reality is actually created by us through our intent. But usually they are transforming without your awareness. Once you're aware that you're dreaming, you recover your power to change the dream whenever you choose. Now, this is very powerful statement over here. Most of the time we are thinking without being aware that we are thinking and what we are thinking. Right. So that is why awareness, being conscious of what your thoughts are, is so important. The simple fact, you know, of the resilience grid, for example. Where are you operating from? You, When you start becoming consciously aware of what you're thinking, what you're doing, what you're being, you can really create transformation in your life. <clears throat> when you discover that you have the power to create a dream of heaven, you want to change your dream and the four agreements are the perfect tool for that. They challenge the tyrant, the judge and the victim in your head. They challenge all those tiny agreements that make your life difficult. So again, this is very beautifully said, right? Most of the time we are self-criticizing ourselves. We are judging ourselves. We are kicking ourselves in the butt and we are getting into the poor me syndrome control drama, right? Once you start operating from the four agreements, which are, we actually have got written here, is being impeccable with your work. If you're saying the truth, then it's the truth. You don't have to manipulate. You don't have to say lies. You don't have to back it up. What is, is, is as simple as that. If you're not making any assumptions, then you're not going to say the truth in any case, right? You're going to look for the truth. You're, I mean, lies in any case. You're going to always be looking for the truth. And the you, you are, uh, yeah, and you're not taking things personally. So most of the time when we th start taking things personally is when our, you know, our uh, 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 shields go up and we start attacking another person who, who we feel is attacking us. Now, if you're not going to take things personally, then 99% of the time you're not going to unnecessarily react to something. We react when we take things personally. So we'll start responding rather than reacting. And of course, doing our best is uh, something that we must always do, whether we like it or not. If we are not giving it a hole in what we are doing, <clears throat> then we are not being true to ourselves. So it's very important that if we start using all the four agreements, at least paying attention to them in our lives, a lot of transformation can definitely take. And if you challenge your beliefs just by asking yourself if what you believe is true, you may find out something very interesting. All your life, you tried to be good enough for somebody else and you left yourself last. You so again, we are always attempting to look good. The facade is always there, right? We need to drop the facade. Uh, Mukul Babi, we are on page 63 of the PDF. Okay, thank you. So the yes, idea I'm... here is that we need to drop the facade and be our true selves, our authentic selves, right? That's when we will have real freedom or we'll at least inch towards real freedom. You sacrificed your personal freedom to live according to someone else's point of view. You tried to be good enough for your mother, your father, your teachers, your beloved your children, your religion and society. 
after trying for so many years, you try to be good enough for yourself. And you find out that you're not good enough for yourself. So again, if you're going to live life through the eyes of others, you're going to be doing what others want from you or expect from you, then it is a problem. We need to be our authentic selves. We need to be do things from the heart, right? We need to do things to feel good, not to look good. And if we are constantly attempting to look good, then we are not operating for ourselves. And then when we want to start feeling good, it becomes very difficult because you are so used to being uh, or carrying that facade that you don't know how to be uh, how to be good for yourself. Right. And that becomes a huge challenge at the end of it. Why not put yourself first? Maybe for the first time in your life, you can relearn how to love yourself by accepting yourself unconditionally. Now, this is important, right? Most of us don't love ourselves. If we don't love ourselves, we cannot love anything else. And most of the time, why you don't love yourself? Because you're constantly criticizing yourself. You're constantly debunking yourself, right? So you need to accept yourself as you are with your, uh, uh, I mean, your talents as well as your shortcomings. You have to accept yourself if you really want to have freedom. And you can start by projecting unconditional love to the authentic you. Then practice loving your authentic self more and more. When you love yourself unconditionally, you are no longer easy prey for an outside predator who wants to control your life. You no longer sacrifice yourself for anyone. If you practice self-love, you will master self-love. So again, very, very important, right? If you're not going to be playing into a control drama, then the other person will not be able to control you, right? You will be true to yourself. You will operate out of a centered awareness, doing what you feel like doing for the greater good, right? This becomes very important. If we do not care for ourselves, then we really can't care for anyone else. Always do your best is the agreement that helps you to become the master artist. The first three agreements are in the realm of the virtual reality. The fourth agreement is in the realm of the physical. It's about taking action and practicing and practicing until you become a dream master. By doing your best over and over, eventually you are going to master the art of transformation. The mastery of transformation is the second mastery of the artist, which you can clearly see in the fourth agreement. When you always do your best, you're taking action, you're transforming yourself, you're changing the dream of your life. So again, when you keep repeating something, you keep repeating something, automatically you're going to become good at it. You're going to become the best at it. That's why tenacity of action is extremely important. And in every action, we need to be doing our best. <clears throat> no sloppiness. So, for example, in that movie Karate Kid, that uh, <clears throat> Mr. Miyagi, he makes him do only this. He's keeping on wiping the windows. He's keeping on wiping the windows with his left hand, with his right hand, with his left hand, with his right hand. And he became so good at that. His arms became so powerful in doing that, that that one move, allowed him to win the, uh, the, the championship cup. So like that, when we start practicing and we stick to what we are doing, we can become masters of our own destiny. We can be become an artist. We can become most proficient in whatever we are doing. right? And that is what creates transformation in our life. And the other thing over here is very clear. right? The physical action is the only thing that we can take in this earth life existence in the physical physical existence the other two make no as other three be impeccable with your word make no assumptions and don't take things personally and not at the physical level so the act is always at the physical level
the goal of the second mastery is to face what you believe and to transform what you believe. The mastery is achieved by changing your agreements and reprogramming your own mind in your own way. The result you want is the freedom to live your own life instead of the life of the belief system. When that book of law is no longer in your mind, the tyrant, the judge and the victim are no longer in your mind either. So again, the tyrant, the judge and the victim come from your belief system. And if you can transcend your belief system and operate from a higher state of consciousness, automatically you get freedom because you will start operating from your authentic self. You're not going to act, act, be acting anymore, right? So transcend, transcending the belief system. This is one of the first things that Robert Monroe also says in the Gateway Voyage is that we need to transcend our belief system. And the belief system is made up of only illusions. The more we can transcend the illusions and drop the illusions willingly, that is what leads us to freedom. If you are forced to drop something, then it is not dropping it willingly. right? When you understand that this is not working for me, this belief system is not working for me and you consciously drop it. That's when the transition takes place. The transformation has already started and it always begins with you. Do you have the courage to be completely honest with yourself? To see the truth about how you write your story? Do you have the courage to see your superstitions and lies? Do you have the courage to review what you believe you are or are there too many wounds to see? Perhaps you're thinking, I don't know, but you're taking the challenge. You're transforming your dream and it's happening right now because of what you're doing is unlearning all your lies. So again, as you start becoming aware of what is not authentic in your life, the transformation automatically starts to take place. Putting it simply, anything that puts you on the left side of the grid is not working for you, right? You need to drop it and start coming into the right side of the grid. And when you operate from the right side of the grid, you will operate from the authentic self. It's not possible to be on the right side and not be authentic to yourself. The four agreements are actually a summary of the mastery of the transformation and the mastery of transformation is the process of unlearning what you have already learned. You learn by making agreements and you unlearn by breaking agreements. Every time you break an agreement, the power of faith that you invested in that agreement comes back to you because you no longer need to spend your energy to keep that agreement alive. So I am like that, right? You have made a statement, you have made a declaration. Now, if you're not like that, you'll have to put energy into that system to keep that I am like that alive. The moment we drop the facade, we drop the, uh, over here he says agreements that we've made that I am like this, right? That when you drop it, you save a lot of energy because you don't have to prop up that image anymore. You can just be your true self wherever and whenever you are. You don't need to create a facade. So a lot of energy gets released. You start by breaking agreements that are small and require less power. As you unlearn, you begin to dismantle the structure of your knowledge and this frees your faith. As you recover your faith, your personal power increases your will becomes stronger. This gives you the power to change another agreement and then another and another. Your personal power keeps growing and growing and because you're much more powerful, you find that almost anything is possible. Soon you are making agreements that lead you to happiness, to joy, to love. Then these new agreements come alive and begin to interact with the outside world and your whole dream changes. 
So again, this is like getting into the flow, right? Once we start getting into the flow, then things automatically start to happen. The old paradigms automatically start to drop. Trust comes into the picture, control drops, and the shift automatically starts to take place. And once it happens internally, then externally also the shifts automatically start to take place. When you unlearn, which is what you're doing now, you begin by facing what you believe. How are you going to face what you believe? You only have one tool to do this, and that tool is doubt. Doubt is a symbol, of course, but what it means is very powerful. With the power of doubt, you challenge every message you deliver and receive. You challenge every belief in your book of law. Then you challenge all the beliefs that rule society until you break the spell of all the lies and superstitions that control your world. As you shall see in part two, the fifth agreement gives you the power of doubt. So how will you dro drop your illusions unless you introspect about them, unless you, you know, dig deep into them, right? Unless you doubt what they are, whether they're true, they're not true, right? We need to transcend them by de defragmenting them, opening it up and actually studying what it is all about, whether it's really serving us or it is not serving us. The power of doubt, the fifth agreement, be skeptical, but learn to listen. So this is amazing, right? Be skeptical, ask the questions, but also listen. Don't reject before listening. Most of the time people don't listen, right? We reject things even before we have, uh, the other person has completed. We are thinking of the answer that we are going to give rather than actually genuinely listening to what the other person has to say and that creates a, uh, a division between what is being said what are you understanding and then how are you responding the fifth agreement is be skeptical but learn to listen be skeptical because most of what you hear isn't true you know that humans speak with symbols and that symbols aren't the truth. Symbols are only the truth because we agree, not because they are really the truth. So again, symbols are a con, I mean, it's a consensual universe, right? We are all consenting to label things around us and all of us can recognize it through that. But the thing isn't what we have labeled the thing, right? We have labeled it for our understanding. But the second half of the agreement is learn to listen. And the reason is simple. When you learn to listen, you understand the meaning of the symbols that people are using. You understand their story and the communication improves a lot. Then perhaps instead of all the confusion among humans, who inhabit the earth, there will be clarity. So again, listening, right, is such an important thing. We have one mouth and two ears. So listening is so important in proper communication that it is not funny. We have to listen. We have to open up ourselves to listen to what is being said. But the second half of the agreement is learn to listen. And the reason is simple. When you learn to listen, you understand the meaning of the symbols that people are using. You understand their story and the communication improves a lot. Then perhaps, instead of all the confusion among humans who inhabit the earth, there will be clarity. Once you realize that hardly anything you know through symbols is true, then be skeptical has a much bigger meaning.
Be skeptical is masterful because it uses the power of doubt to discern the truth. Whenever you hear a message from yourself or from another artist, simply ask, is it truth or is it not truth? Is it reality or is it a virtual reality? The doubt takes you behind the symbols and makes you responsible for every message you deliver and receive. So again, so being aware of your thoughts, where are you thinking from? What is the state of consciousness with which you're operating? Where in the scale of consciousness you're operating? Where in the grid are you operating from? These, these questions will answer these questions that you have and get rid of the uh, issues which are there, the doubts that you have. Why would you want to invest your faith in any message that is not true? By being skeptical, you don't believe every message. You don't put your faith in symbols. And when your faith is not in symbols, your faith is in yourself. So getting in touch with our true authentic selves, right? Then we don't need to depend on words. There is a download which starts taking place. It has been said that very, two very high spiritual, highly spiritual people, when they meet, they just sit in silence with each other. And all the data gets transmuted, right? They're not saying anything, but all information gets transmuted. How is that happening? Because we are still, we are able to receive the message that is being said, and we don't need to pay attention to it also. It simply happens. Then, if faith is believing without a doubt and doubt is not believing, be skeptical, don't believe, and what you will not, and what will you not believe? Well, you will not believe all the stories that we artists create with our knowledge. You know the most of our knowledge isn't true. The whole symbology isn't true. So don't believe me, don't believe yourself and don't believe anybody else. So always be aware, always be on the watch out. If anything is coming into your conscious awareness and is pulling you down. The truth doesn't need you to believe it. The truth simply is. And it survives whether you believe it or not. Lies need you to believe them. If you don't believe lies, they don't survive your skepticism and they simply disappear. So this is very important, right? If you don't believe a lie, then it has no power over you because you're not believing it. The moment you believe it, that's when it holds power away. But skepticism can go in two directions. One way is to pretend to be skeptical because you think you're too smart to be gullible. Look at how intelligent I am. I don't believe in anything. This is not skepticism. To be skeptical is not to believe everything you hear and you don't believe because it's not the truth. That's all. The way to be skeptical is just to be aware that the entire humanity believes in lies. You know that humans distort the truth because we are dreaming and our dream is just a reflection of the truth. Every artist distorts the truth, but you don't need to judge what somebody says or call that person a liar. All of us tell lies in one way or another. And it's not because we want to lie. It's because of what we believe. It's because of the symbols we learn and the way we are applying all of those symbols. Once you are aware of this, the fifth agreement makes a lot of sense and it can make a very big difference in your life. People will come to you and tell you their personal story. They will tell you their point of view. What they believe is truth. But you won't judge if it's truth or if it's not truth. You don't have any judgment, but you do have respect. You listen to the way other people express their symbols 
knowing that whatever they say is distorted by their beliefs. You know that what they are telling you is nothing but a story. And you know that because you can feel it. You just know. But you also know when their words come from truth and you know without words and that's the main point. So again, when the truth is said, it will always make you strong. When we use kinesiology, right? The ring test, for example. Whenever the truth is there, it will always make you strong. Whenever lies are there or assumptions are there, it will make you weak, right? So this is very important. You listen to the way other people express their symbols, knowing that whatever they say is distorted by their beliefs. So whatever anyone says, it will always have a connotation or an effect about their belief system. If they believe something is wrong, then they will express it like that. If they believe something is right, then they will also express it in the same. Truth of Bhaiya, Yes. Sorry, can you give us an example? Of what? Of this truth and uh, thing. Uh, so... Simple example. Then it sticks. So I say your name. Uh, your name is Rita. Okay. Is it the truth or not? No, the truth? no, no. Okay. So if it is not the truth, it's going to make you weak. If it is the truth, it will make you strong. Right. Okay. Now, someone may think. I mean, there are many times you know people mistake sisters for each other. Yeah. Right. So they are saying that they are believing that this is you, but actually that is not you. True. Because in their mind that this person is, this is the name of that person. But it may not be the truth. Okay. 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 So you are being distorted by what your belief is. Like some people will say eating meat is wrong. And others will say eating meat is right. How are they coming? They are coming through their belief system. Right. Right, right. Got it. Now, effectively speaking, some for some people, may, meat may be required and for others, it may not be required. So, it may be actually wrong for them to eat. Now, that would be truth, right? For medically, you're not supposed... I mean, your system cannot digest the meat. So, now if you're eating meat, it's wrong for you. But then others will say it because of religious sentiments. So, then that is not effectively 100% the truth. Right? For example, if someone is in uh, uh, Iceland, for example, they, they don't have crops there. They have to eat meat. They don't have an option. Okay. Got it. Things like that. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Truth or fiction, you don't have to believe anyone's story. You don't have to form an opinion about what someone says. You don't have to express your own opinion. You don't have to agree or disagree. Just listen. This is so beautiful, right? And I've been, I've been seeing this transformation happening in me personally. Where previously I had, I had to have an opinion about everything, right? Now I'm seeing that in my mind, as soon as I'm going to give the opinion, the question is coming, do I really need to give an opinion? Now in 9 out of 10 cases, you will find that you really don't need to give your opinion. Right. Unless you are specifically asked, stay still, listen to all the parameters, listen to all the point of views. You may land up learning something and growing because of that. Because what you know, you know. Right. What are we here to for? We want to learn. And how will we learn? By listening, not by speaking. Okay. Yeah, of course, we grow by speaking also because we revise what we are saying. But most of the time we learn through listening. So it's more important to listen rather than just give your opinion because most people don't want your opinion. They already have their opinion and they're okay with their opinion. So you really don't need to agree or disagree or even give your opinion. The more impeccable a person is with the word, the clearer the message will be. But the words that come from another artist have nothing to do with you. 
you know that it's nothing personal. You listen and you understand all the words, but the words are no longer affecting you. You no longer judge what other people say because you understand what they are doing. They are only letting you know what is going on in their virtual world. So when anyone is having an opinion, it is based on what they are thinking and what assumptions, etc. they have made, right? Or what belief system they are operating from. That's all, nothing more than that. So if we just listen, rather than get into agreements or disagreements or saying this is right and that is wrong, let's just listen and feel and be what is. You already have the awareness that all artists live in their own dream, in their own world. And in that world, whatever they perceive is truth for them. And it could be that it's absolutely true for the artists who are expressing their story, but it's not truth for you. So again, <clears throat> there can be something can be true for Mr. A, but it may not be true for Mr. B. Right. So again, Truth depends on your perspective. It depends on your point of view. The only truth for you is what you perceive in your world. With this awareness, there's nothing to prove to anyone. It's not about being right or wrong. You respect whatever somebody says because it's another artist speaking. Respect is so important. When you learn to listen, you show respect for the other artists. You show respect for their art, for their creation. So again, when you listen, you give respect, right? <clears throat> a good, if you ask people uh, whether someone is a great conversationalist, conversationalist or not, right? Most of the time you will find people who listen will be in their, uh, in their system will be considered good communicators. Why? Because they listen to the other person and then re-communicate what they have learned and what they have understood from the communication. But in most cases, that doesn't happen. People are wanting to be ready with what they are going to say rather than listen to what is being said. Respect is so important. When you learn to listen, you show respect for the other artists. You show respect for their art, for their creation. All artists have the right to create their art in whatever they, way they want. They have the right to believe whatever they want to believe. They have the right to say whatever they have to say. But if you don't learn to listen, you will never understand what they are saying. Listening is so important in communication. When you learn to listen, you know exactly what other people want. Once you know what they want, what you do with that information is up to you. You can react or not react. You can agree or disagree with what they say. And that depends on what you want. So again, uh, when listening, you need to take a call what you need to do about it, right? To help a person, to ignore the person, and so on and so forth. Just because other people want something, that doesn't mean you have to give them what they want. People are always trying to hook your attention because through the attention, they can download any information. Many times you just don't want that information. You listen, you don't want it. You ignore it and change directions. But if that information hooks your attention, then you really want to listen to find out if what someone is saying is important to you. Then you can share your point of view. If you want to know, if you want to, knowing that is just a point of view, that's your choice, but the key is to listen. Again, it's a matter of point of view. How does the situation occur to you? Right, but again, to make it occur, you have to listen. Now, listen can be determined by also where seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling. All these are inputs, right? So you can substitute any of these with the word listening, right? 
the choices that we make are based on what we are listening what is our experience again it is because of listening if you don't learn to listen you will never understand what i'm sharing with you right now you will jump to conclusions and react like it's your dream when it's not your dream when other artists are sharing their dream with you just be aware that it's their dream you know what your dream is and what your dream is not right now i'm sharing the way that i perceive the world the way that i dream and my stories are truth for me but i know they are not the real truth so don't believe me whatever i tell you is just my point of view of course from my point of view i am sharing the truth with you i do my best to use words in the most impeccable way so that you can understand what i am saying but even if i share an exact copy of the truth with you i know that you will distort my message as soon as it goes from my mind into yours you will hear the message and tell yourself the same message in a completely different way according to your point of view so again it's a basically a point of view and how are we listening to the message then perhaps what i say is the truth or not the truth but perhaps what you believe is not the truth i am only one half of the message you are the other half i am responsible for what i say but i am not responsible for what you understand you are responsible for what you understand you are responsible for whatever you do with what you hear in your head because you are the one who gives the meaning to every word that you hear so again responsibility right we need to be responsible for ourselves we need to be responsible for what we hear and we need to be responsible for what is being generated after we hear yes renu ji uh, there was one line which um, was a little earlier you know in this paragraph only people mm. are always trying to hook your attention because through the attention they can download any information what does that mean what kind of information are they so trying today, to today today suppose someone is not really paying attention to you mm-hmm. and not listening to you have they heard you no have you caught their attention you have not been no. able to download anything into them right mm-hmm. if they are not paying attention to what you are saying and doing mm-hmm. then they have not paid attention they are not going to get what you are saying but when they pay attention that is when they'll get what you are saying Oh, so this is about the other person. The other person they they that you, the yeah, people want to grab your attention uh-huh. so that they can download what they are thinking into you. Into you. Oh, okay. So I was thinking that you are trying to get something from. I, I was doing it the other way around. Yeah. So yeah. that's how I got confused. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Right now, you are interpreting what I am saying according to your personal knowledge. you are rearranging the symbols and transforming them in a way that maintains an equilibrium with everything in your belief system now this is important whenever we hear something new we are going to attempt to rehash it with our knowledge with the experiences that we've had previously right and this is how the brain also works whenever the brain is perceiving something or when you're visually seeing something the brain is creating the image the eyes are not seeing it and it does that based on previous experience that it has had the records which are there it keeps taking from that and filling up the picture so in the same way whatever your belief system is whatever you hear you are going to be rearranging it so that you understand it right it comes within your parameters that is why transcending the belief systems is very important if you want to expand your horizons otherwise your ex- horizons are not going to be expanded the belief system will keep you stuck to where you are
once you achieve that equilibrium you may or may not accept my story as the truth and you can make the assumption that what you are telling yourself is what i intended to say but it doesn't mean that your assumption is true you can misinterpret what i say you can use what you hear to blame me to blame somebody else to blame yourself to blame your religion or philosophy to be angry with everybody mainly with yourself you can also use what you hear to find the truth to find yourself to make peace with yourself and perhaps to change the message that you deliver to yourself so two sides of the coin right you can take things ulta that is in the depleting way you can take things in the uplifting way it's all up to you so again this is very important again which side of the grid are you operating from if you are operating from the left side all the time you will find you will uh, take everything from the left side of the grid if you are operating more on the right side you will take everything that comes into your life with blinkers in the eyes looking at it from the right side of the grid and whenever you are on the right side integration takes place there is integrity growth takes place when you are on the left side no growth will take place everything will ultimately collapse if you are operating from the left side of the grid you can also use what you hear to find the truth to find yourself to make peace with yourself and perhaps to change the message that you deliver to yourself so again the message that we deliver to ourselves our self talk right what is going on that broken down record player which is constantly running and constantly depleting us that's why again it becomes very important to watch the thoughts we are having because i'm if if someone is having a constant thought au lau lu 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 that person will become a nullu right because you are putting that into the system now if you do it out of awareness then you may enjoy the owl and then drop it you are not going to become the owl for example whatever you do with my words is up to you it's your dream and i respect your dream you don't have to believe me but if you learn to listen you can understand what i'm saying and if the information i'm sharing with you makes sense to you then you can make it a part of your dream if you want to so again we have freedom to accept or to reject and that rejection is done through the mirror or i mean the shades of your belief system that's why again i'm repeating transcending our belief systems become very very important you can take whatever works for you and use it to modify your dream and what doesn't work for you just ignore it won't make any difference to me but it might make a difference to you because i make the assumption knowing that it's an assumption that you want to become a better artist and that's why you are challenging your own beliefs then be skeptical don't believe me don't believe anybody else but especially don't believe yourself when i say don't believe yourself oh my goodness can you see the implication don't believe everything you learn not believing yourself is a huge advantage because most of what you learn is not the truth everything you know your whole reality is nothing but symbols but you are not that bunch of symbols that talk in your head you know that and that's why you are skeptical and you don't believe yourself so again very important right okay. hold on to what works for you drop anything that doesn't work for you because if it's not working for you genuinely it may be putting in your putting you mostly in the left side of the grid so become aware of this what is working for me and what is not working for you for for me right also whenever we are doing something we must be always open to new ideas we must be open to do things better so if someone comes up with the idea we need to listen to those people right instead of fighting the people all the time
If your beliefs are telling you, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm old, I'm a loser, I'm not good enough, it's not strong, I'm not strong enough, I'll never make it, then don't believe yourself because it's not true. These messages are distorted. They are nothing but lies. Once you can see the lies, you don't have to believe them. Use the power of doubt to challenge every message that you deliver to yourself. So now this is again important, right? If you see all these things that you said, yeah, I am fat, ugly, old, loser, not good enough, not strong enough, I'll never make it. All of these are putting us on the left side of the group, right? Again, I'm repeating, only manifestation takes place from the right side of the grid. There's no manifestation possible from the left side of the grid. But if you really look at ourselves, most of the time, all of us are spending more time in the left side of the grid. Is it really true that I'm ugly? Is it really true that I'm not good enough? Is this message real or is it virtual? Of course, it's virtual. None of these messages come from truth, from lies. They come from distortions in our knowledge. The truth is, there are no ugly people. There is no good enough or strong enough. There is no universal book of law where any of these judgments are true. These judgments are just agreements that humans make. So all judgments, right? All belief systems are just made by humans. They're not made by the Almighty. Can you see the consequences of believing yourself? Believing yourself is one of the worst things you can do because you've been telling yourself lies your whole life. And if you believe all those lies, that's why your dream isn't a pleasant dream. If you believe what you tell yourself, you may use all those symbols that you learn to hurt yourself. Your personal dream may even be pure hell because believing in lies is how you create your own hell. If you're suffering, it's not because anybody is making you suffer. It's because you obey the tyrant that's ruling your head. When the tyrant obeys you, when there's no longer a judge or a victim in your mind, you won't be suffering any longer. So again, we create our hell and we create our heaven. Where are we operating from is the question that we need to keep on asking ourselves. Your tyrant is ruthless. It's always abusing you by using all those symbols against you. It thrives on emotional poison regenerated by negative emotions and the way it generates these emotions in you is by judging and giving opinions. Nobody judges you more than you judge yourself. Of course, you try to escape from the judgment, the guilt, the rejection, the punishment. But how can you escape from your own thoughts? If you don't like someone, you can walk away. If you don't like yourself, wherever you go, you're still there. You can hide from everybody else, but you cannot hide from your own judgment. It seems as if there is no escape. So it's very important to accept ourselves as we are. Yes, of course, strive to be better, but then accept what you are. If we are not accepting what we are, that's what creates a lot of confusion in the family system. That's why so many people overeat, take drugs, abuse alcohol and become addicted to various substances and behaviors. They try to do whatever they can to avoid their own story, to avoid their own creation that's distorting all those symbols in their head. Some people are suffering from so much emotional pain that they decide to take their own lives. That's what lies can do to any of us. The voice of knowledge can become so distorted and create so much self-hate that it kills the human. And all of this is just because we believe all those opinions that we learned over so many years. 
so again we are we create our belief system through our experiences and the opinions that we hear from others that's why discerning what is what is our belief system where are we operating from again becomes so important again and again it's coming back to the same thing right you have to you have to be clear about what is true and what is not true whether it will hold under all circumstances or not right that that's where uh, the jamila comes right is it the authentic truth or not just imagine that all your own opinions plus all the opinions of everybody around you are like a huge hurricane inside you imagine believing all those opinions well if you are skeptical if you don't believe yourself if you don't believe anybody else then none of these opinions can disturb you or throw you off your center when you have control over your own symbology you are always centered you are always relaxed and calm because the real you makes the choices in your life not the symbols when you want to communicate something you order the symbols and that is the way they come out of your mouth so again becoming the shaman right the shaman was in control of his thoughts he was always centered he was not uh, perturbed he had his own methods of discerning the truth that is why intuitive abilities going into expanded states of consciousness becomes so important because you can be sthir in your knowing in your uh, state of being and you're not going to be swayed by other belief systems so that becomes very important and the other thing is that you are all right if you're what you are operating from shifts because you're not rigid you're not stuck with it you will always be flexible right if you are in that state of consciousness and that's the point be skeptical about everything is this working or it's not if it's working hold on to it if it's not change it do something that transforms it so that it starts working for you if you are in a position to do that you are the artist and you can arrange the symbols in any way you want in any direction you want because all those symbols are at your command you can use the symbols to ask for what you need to express what you want what you don't want you can express your thoughts your feelings your dreams in the most beautiful poetry or prose but just because you use a language to communicate it doesn't mean that you believe it why do you need to believe what you already know when you are alone and talking to yourself it's completely meaningless what can you tell yourself that you don't already know so again expressing your thoughts becomes very important Ex expressing and being skeptical about them right is it the truth is it for the greater good all these thoughts you must have If you understand the fifth agreement you will see the reason why you don't need to believe what you can see what you already know without words the truth doesn't come with words the truth is silent it's something that you just know it's something that you can feel without words and it's called silent knowledge silent knowledge is what you know before you invest your faith in symbols when you open yourself to the truth and learn to listen then all the symbols lose their value and the only thing that remains is the truth there's nothing to know there's nothing to justify so it's that sense of knowing that deep sense of knowing right that this is the truth and when you are you when you are in that state of consciousness then everything else starts to fall and that comes from that inner silence that stillness of the mind right and it's extremely important for us to go into that stillness to hold that state of consciousness to hold our center right when we are looking at it from bio biogeometry principles i mentioned this process also every and each item around us has a center 
and in the center they are the sacred uh, sacred frequencies are there which actually are the creative force so over here what i feel that they are talking about what is the truth right it's that sacred creative energy which is there in everything but we need to clear clear the shaft to understand what is that center of truth and when we start connecting to that we automatically start getting centered ourselves that's why it's very important to listen the whole chapter has been on listening listen and be skeptical that okay what is happening is it working is it not working is it working if it's not working if it's not working we need to have the courage to drop it to eliminate it from our system that is when we will come slowly 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 to our authentic selves i think we can stop here